Today, there are two species of alligator, the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. The American alligator is the larger of the two species and is endemic to the southeastern states. The Chinese alligator is listed as critically endangered, with only about 300 individuals existing in the wild. Neither species lives in Australia. Here we ask the question, why are there no alligators in Australia? Although alligators are confined to the Americas and China, crocodiles are found across a much greater range. In fact, crocodiles are found in Australia, whilst alligators are not. But why is this? They both occupy similar niches, and although there are many differences between the two species, to the untrained eye, they look and behave similarly. It all comes down to their evolutionary history, where the species originated from, and how the crocodiles evolved a unique feature, whilst the alligators did not. Alligators are apex predators in their environment. Today, they typically consume fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. In America, they also pose a significant threat to people and their pets who may stray too close to the water's edge. They occupy freshwater habitats, which is one of the reasons why they never made it to Australia. While the crocodiliform lineage extends back over 200 million years to the late Triassic, modern forms did not appear on the scene until the Cretaceous. This was around 145 million years ago, and fossil evidence suggests that these modern crocodilians first appeared in what would become known as Europe. From there, they then spread to the Americas and beyond. At the time, the land masses and continents were very different from today. Eurasia and North America formed a northern supercontinent called Laurasia. Animals could move freely across this enormous landmass, which was separated from the other large landmass called Gondwana. This was more southerly and consisted of modern-day continents of South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. The Cretaceous periods went through a huge amount of geological and climatic change. The land masses were breaking apart and moving. Oceans were forming, and this was having a massive impact on life on Earth. By the late Cretaceous, North America was split in half, the west from the east. India moved northwards towards Asia, and Australia and Antarctica remained connected, drifting away from South America and Africa. The crocodilians were already thriving on the planet. They were wide and varied in their size, shape, and the niches they occupied. One of the largest known species was Sarcosuchus, which measured 9.5 meters, or 31 feet long, and weighed up to 4 tons. It lived 130 million years ago and likely lived in freshwater habitats. But as the land masses and continents broke up and drifted apart, animals that once covered a large global range became more isolated. This is what initially happened to the crocodilians. In North America, crocodiles and alligators split from each other around 80 million years ago. They both thrived in the climate of North America during the late Cretaceous. It was warmer than it is today, perfect for cold-blooded reptiles to survive in. Whilst both crocodiles and alligators lived side by side, that was soon to change as crocodiles could disperse. Whilst the alligator is just found in the US and China, crocodiles are found across a much broader global range. They live throughout the tropics in Africa, Asia, the Americas, and Australia. The ability of some of them to tolerate salt water has been the reason for them spreading across the world. Unlike alligators, saltwater crocodiles evolved salt glands and impermeable skin. So, even when the land masses split apart, isolating other species, the saltwater crocodile could still migrate from one continent to another. They can tolerate salinity from 0 to 60% without any adverse effects. In comparison, alligators cannot survive in any salt water for any great length of time. The extra renal salt secreting glands in the saltwater crocodile are located on their tongue. There are 20 to 40 pores on the tongue through which they excrete excess sodium chloride, enabling the crocodiles to control their blood salt levels even in the open sea. Being able to survive in salt water meant that the crocodiles could traverse the open oceans. They could cross between the continents and dominate new lands. Even today, they are known to travel for hundreds of miles across open seawater, using the currents to help them swim such great distances to find new hunting grounds and territories. Being cold-blooded reptiles, they could go for weeks or even months without eating anything. This allowed them to travel far without the need for stopping to hunt. The alligators that remained in North America then evolved 
and diverged into other species. Between 55 and 65 million years ago, caiman split from alligators and headed south. The other species of alligator, the Chinese alligator, split from the American one around 33 million years ago. This species is thought to have made it across to China, not by swimming in the open sea, but by crossing the Bering Land Bridge like so many other animals at the time. When sea levels rose and the land bridge disappeared, the two distinct species remained isolated from one another, the Pacific Ocean creating a formidable barrier between the two continents. The Chinese alligator once thrived in China. It inhabited the freshwater waterways, being particularly abundant in the lower Yangtze area. They used to be much feared by local people. But with the development of rice farms centuries ago, the Chinese alligator's habitat dried up. Their wetland territories were converted to rice paddies. As a result, their population numbers took a dramatic dive. By the 1950s, the alligator was only found in three distinct regions, and now its range is incredibly restricted to an area of just two square miles. With so few left in the wild, there is huge concern about major inbreeding within the species and whether they can be saved from the brink of extinction. Caymans inhabit waterways in Mexico and Central and South America. It is unknown exactly how the smallest crocodilian, which averages weights of just 6 to 40 kilograms, or 13 to 90 pounds, made it across to South America. Their fossils date back to before the Panama land bridge was formed. Therefore, paleontologists assume they swam across. Like alligators, caimans are not tolerant of salt water, but maybe the gap between the two continents at that time was narrow enough for them to make the journey. As well as their inability to tolerate salt water like crocodiles, alligators have some other obvious differences with their cousins. These include the shape of the snout, the structure of the teeth, the skin color, and the behavior. Alligators possess a much broader, more U-shaped mouth, whilst crocodiles have more pointy snouts. When their mouths are closed, the lower teeth are visible on a crocodile, but not on an alligator. Crocodiles are more olive or even tan in color, but alligators are black or gray. Finally, behavior. Crocodiles are known to be more aggressive and therefore more dangerous than alligators. Despite these differences, crocodiles and alligators could survive together. There is one place on Earth where they do still live side by side, and that is in North America. Both the American alligator and the Florida crocodile inhabit the same environment in the Florida Everglades. They are limited by their water preference. The alligator inhabits freshwater lakes, swamps, and ponds, whilst the crocodile invariably lives in saltwater rivers and waterways. This means that if alligators were introduced to the freshwater ecosystems of Australia, then they would likely survive. They would probably compete with the crocodilians already there, though. Freshwater crocodiles are endemic to Australia and inhabit the inland waterways. They are smaller and less aggressive than the salties, and, although they can tolerate saltwater, they are kept upstream by the more dominant saltwater crocodiles. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest extant reptiles in the world and have been known to exceed 20 feet long. They typically spend the winter months in rivers and then head down to the estuaries and into the sea during the hotter season. Having three species of crocodilian in Australian waters would have an impact on the ecosystem. They all eat similar prey. Although the larger species consume larger animals, fish stocks may take a hit, and there could be competition for territories and space. Being a naturally less aggressive species, the alligators may need to find their niche to survive in Australia. Otherwise, they would get pushed out by the crocodiles. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.